Medic, I'm lying hard. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, I'm excited to um, finally get to Durga, which we've been trying to do for absolutely blooming ages. So, can you hear me all right? Is the music loud? I'm not too bad. How is it? Is the sound okay? Is it good? Can you hear me or not? Hi, Claire. Hey, <laughs> hello. Nice to see you. The music is quite loud. Is it? Okay, hang on. Let me just turn that down a tad. Tad here. There you go. Is that better? Can slightly more. <laughs> down a bit more, yeah? Yeah. How's that? Yeah, that sounds good. Don't hear me okay, yeah? not breaking up no fantastic wonderful welcome everybody so it's so nice to see you and um i think i don't know if julie and sarah will come in tonight actually um hopefully they will make it so for our session tonight we are going to need a journal and a pen um if you have a candle um i have uh, actually brought rosemary oil tonight if you have some if you don't don't worry anything will be will be good um my, my, my candle cacao and or herbal tea if you would like one um if you'd like to take some cacao with you for tonight hi Carol. caroline are you at home or at work you work well at work <laughs> um and also, we are going to be doing a little bit of yoga. Hi, sir. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of yoga and a nice relaxation, a mudra, um, a little meditation to begin. And we've got about, about an hour and a half together tonight. Hi, Julie. Yay. <laughs> the girls are back in town. <laughs> it's so nice to see everyone. Some of you haven't seen for blooming ages, so it's lovely. Um, so let's delve in to a little bit of Durga energy tonight. So I've been so creative today. I, I cannot even tell you how creative I've been. I'm getting like canvas down to a fine art. I have created a booklet to accompany this session tonight that looks really cool. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. Um, so yeah, I've been learning quite a lot of new tips and tricks and how to work with Canva and 
and one thing or another. So yeah, I've had a few few um yeah workings out of how to do it and yeah so I've managed to create I'm, I'm gonna show you actually because I'm well proud of this. <laughs> It's got colour right to edges. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look. And it's a full thing. It's got it's a full thing with all the, like, um, the mudras and everything. I'm so excited. Can't tell you. All right. So let us drop it in and uh, we'll open up our space tonight. So find yourself a nice, cosy place. And... Um, we're going to do a little chant. Those of you um, that are new, that maybe haven't been into um, anything like this before, I think there is a couple of you maybe that haven't done anything with um, the goddesses before. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be working with a short a short um, mantra, um, which is Om Dom Durgaye Namaha. So if you know it already, then chant along with me. And um, we're only going to take like nine rounds so not a full hundred nights we've only got an hour and a half <laughs> trying to get everything in um but just to invoke this lovely energy durga the goddess of courage and strength and we're going to work with one of the um kind of many areas that we could work with 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 durga which is um the area of discernment and i thought this is quite actually quite a good time right now to be kind of looking at like where we might want to you know let go of stuff clear out a little bit I'm, I'm doing a bit of a clear out of my house at the moment like every corner is getting cleared out just now so um this seems to <laughs> Dirk seems to have um yeah a work and a little clearing process in, in me so um yeah looking at like how, you know where we're hanging on to things and maybe we don't need anymore and that might be stuff in the house and it may be uh, limiting beliefs, limiting thought patterns. And she's really good at, hi Sharon. And she's really good at helping us clear away um, these old mindsets. So as we drop in, let's have a moment. If you wanna have some um, rosemary oil, I'm gonna light a candle as we open our space as well. So if you do have a candle, um, we'll, we'll begin with that um, before we go in. So just let yourselves land. And just take a couple of breaths for yourselves. And you might want to just close your eyes as we begin to detach from, from our day, from the muggleness of the day, silliness of the day, maybe even. Hi, Claire. Close down, so keep going up. And let us just land. So just taking a moment to find yourselves into a lovely, comfortable place. And let's just take two or three nice deep breaths for ourselves. And as we drop into these lovely um, goddess energies together, we just take a moment to I'm just gonna I'm gonna shut my cats out because I know for a fact that they're just gonna start fighting in a minute. Get out, go on, off go. See my little Durga vibe with them. <laughs> Tell them what's going on. <laughs> so just letting yourselves come in and allowing um like a rooting cord. You may have your own way of doing this, but just letting your energy ground itself. As you take a few breaths and just feel your contact with the earth beneath. So just starting to feel a sense of letting your weight down. And as we enter into our sacred space, there is nowhere that you need to be. There's nothing that you need to do. And just deep dive into a lovely session that is offered just for you to nourish your soul, your heart as we arrive here together. And so I'll open our space with a woman's 
uh, I've had this. Um, if you haven't seen um, that Lynette's book, Earth, was launched this week. So beautiful book. I've got a lovely reading from that. Yeah, I've got mine here as well. So I've got a reading from that for tonight as well. Yay, gorgeous. Um, yeah, so this is Lynette's, uh, one of Lynette's opening blessings from, um, from a woman's blessing, actually. To the women who held us our whole lives, we give great thanks. To the women around us who dance with us, sing with us, and impart their love and wisdom to us on a daily basis, we give great thanks. To the wise women of our futures, the ones who aren't yet born, the ones who are still so young but will teach us the most, and our beautiful sisters in our circle, we give great thanks. Our circle today is now open. So if you would like to light your candles, And as we light our candles, Durga is um, quite a fire goddess, a bit of a kick-ass goddess is Durga. So um, as we light our candles, just connecting to the fire and that Durga shares with us. Um, so because she is very much associated to the element of fire, um, she's a beautiful protection goddess. So very, very amazing when we're in times of challenge in, in our lives and even challenges with ourselves. I think one of the main challenges we often have that Durga can really help us with is the not enoughness challenge, uh, where we're, you know, we we don't want to kind of step up because we we don't feel enough or we don't feel good enough or we're not quite there yet. We need to do more. Um so she is simply um her name simply is Devi, which means goddess. And some some of the Sanskrit Deva means just means to shine. So she really invites us to shine our lights. So as we bring in our rosemary oil, if you have some, or even um, if you want to replay this and do it again, you could just bring some rosemary in from the garden, which is so lovely as well. And I have some nice rosemary at the moment. Um and so as you bring uh, the molecules, warm them in your hands and maybe bringing those through, that through your field a little bit as well. And breathing in, it smells gorgeous. And just breathing that lovely oil into your, just bringing it into your bloodstream. So oil of knowledge and transitions and my gift to you is remembrance. And a mantra, and I think this is a really great mantra to work with with Durga, I am clear about what I want in my life. I am clear about what I want in my life. So as we come through um, the session tonight, we're going to be looking at uh, discernment. And um, and Durga actually carries a club. <laughs> so <laughs> rather than the sword of discernment, be like the club of discernment. <laughs> So here we go with the club of discernment tonight. Just bopping out. Hi, Amanda. Bopping out anything that's getting in our way. Um, so this uh, also known for purifying and uplifting properties, which can help to dispel negative energy and promote a sense of clarity and empowerment. And she is a goddess of empowerment too. So um, wherever we need to kind of stand in our power, um, claim our energy back, call our energy back from, you know, um, any times in our lives where we've maybe felt disempowered or, you know, somebody may have, you know, dulled our shine for a little bit, then then goddess Durga is is a wonderful goddess to, to call our energy back. So if you do have some cacao and you'd like to um, bring your cacao in for a blessing, then we're going to do that next. Um if not tea or just plain water is one of the best medicines we can take. So if you do have your cacao, you can bring it into, into your heart. As we offer a lovely blessing um, to, to our sacred medicine. May our cacao be blessed as plant medicine and remembered as the food of the goddess. 
May she be healing to our bodies, minds and souls. May she deliver to each of us exactly what we need as of now. It is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be our home. So just have a moment with your cacao. I'd like you to set a beautiful intention for yourself tonight. So this um, goddess of courage and strength. So where could you benefit for, from maybe a little bit of discernment? And sometimes with discernment, we do need that extra bit of courage and strength to let stuff go and to be really truthful with ourselves, with the, you know, the um, areas in our lives where we may want to, um, you know, move and change and shift things. So um, as you set an intention and just allow yourself to drop in for a moment to into your heart, like what is your heart's desire? What is your heart's desire right at this time? And as you connect with the plant medicine, then with your first sip, you can welcome the spirit of this beautiful being. And with your second sit, feeling the warmth and love from our lovely teacher plant. And with your third sip, and as you finish your cacao, again, just contemplating on the qualities of courage and strength. And also any challenges that you maybe are experiencing at this moment. I think this goddess also really represents resilience. And sometimes I think we forget how resilient we are. You know, we um, probably in our lifetimes overcome many, many challenges. And sometimes we forget how far, how far we've come. So when we see um, goddess depicted in Hindu mythology, um, she's often seen riding a tiger or a lion. And this really represents her courage and her strength that she has mastered these, you know, this fierce animal that she rides. And um, the story of Durga is a, kind of sent her, her name means invincible, unconquerable. And she was drafted in to um, slay demons. And within our own self, those demons may be uh, limiting, you know, thought patterns, addictions, um, you know, any sort of, yeah, stuff that, ha that really isn't helping us and supporting us in, in our lives. So we might um, draw her in to help us with inner and outer criticism, you know, where, where we criticise ourselves maybe. Of course, all of the, um, the goddesses are often seen as in, in, in like in battle. Um, you know, we see Kali with the severed heads of the ego and Durga is is no exception in that she holds us in love, but also is more one of more of the kick-ass goddesses. She's not a, you know, she's not a walkover. She's a bit hard. Or she's a, a kind of Shiva type energy that will, you know, create um, create destruction and chaos. Um, but usually, more so that you know, where we need it. And actually the, the saying that by which you fall is that by which you rise is one of her sayings and that, you know, when we get knocked down and actually we were talking about this a little bit in, um, in yoga last week about how in, um, when we're in this state of abundance, we're in this, um, state of no matter what abundance, even, 
if things are you know like not going the way we want them to we can still be thankful for the blessings that are you know that are offered there so we're going to go into a short meditation with Durga with a mudra uh, tonight which is the Tejas Mudra so some of you will have done Tejas Mudra before and um, I will share I'll just I'll show you um, here so the the heels of the hands are going to come together and the thumbs and then the index fingers so the, the thumbs and the index fingers touch and then the three fingers are extended away. So it looks like a little fire. It's like a like a fire. Um, can you see? I can do it from the top. Yeah, so thumbs and index fingers together, heels of the hands together, and then the three fingers are kind of extended. Now you can let that the mudra sit into the belly um, because Durga is also the, like, uh, where she sits is in fire elements. This is into the solar plexus chakra as well. So where courage and strength and, you know, resilience and confidence, you know, all these lovely qualities of the Manipura chakra sit. So as we hold the um, the mudra just in the belly, just letting your shoulders relax for a moment, you can just close your eyes there. And again, just taking a couple of nice deep breaths as you hold the mudra. And tejas is um, a beautiful quality that comes from um, the from the yogic tradition. Tejas is again the element of fire. It is this lovely light that is within us when we're full of energy and vitality. So as we just hold the mudra for a couple of moments, just bringing your awareness to your belly and the area of your belly that's just rising and falling as you breathe. And again, just allowing yourself to ground, maybe sending a root down through the base of your body. and deeper and deeper down to the very heart of the earth. And as you let your, your face relax a little, just letting your shoulders relax. And let your belly relax and your back relax. And your hips relax and your legs and your feet relax. And you allow yourself to rest a little heavier on the ground beneath. And just following your breath and allowing your awareness to rest in the belly. The Manipura center is said to be the city of jewels is described as a city of jewels. So as you feel into the belly, and you might feel a sense of warmth, just beginning to accumulate in the belly as you breathe. And as we go into this short meditation, I just want you to have a moment with perhaps a inner obstacle that you may have within your path at the moment. Any challenges that you might be presented with, big or small. And we can offer them into Durga's loving embrace. I'm gonna offer the chant nine times and you can chant along if you already know the chant, which I'm sure a lot of you do. So 
So taking a nice deep breath in as we invite our beautiful goddess Durga to be here with us in our circle. Om Dung Durgaye Namaha. 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 Taking a nice deep breath in. And just allow yourself to take up a little bit more space as you hold the breath for a second. And then allow the breath out. And then allow your breath to be just steady. As you become aware of the Durga Shakti as a shimmering presence around you. You may visualize her seated on her lion or on her tiger. Her dark hair streams over her shoulders and she wears a golden crown, a scarlet silk sari, golden necklaces, rings and bangles. See Durga's magnificent arms, strong and wielding weapons, the bell, the sword, the shield, the club, the spear and the lotus. She is watching you with an intent gaze. Her eyes are large and dark. And as you tune into your heart space, offer your salutations to her. Ask her, What are any major inner obstacles that I may have to face at this time? And turning this over to the universe, offer all this to Durga Shakti, asking that her grace dissolve all obstacles in the way of our awakening to all that we are. When you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction. And you find yourself in a new, great and wonderful world. Dormant forces faculties and talents become alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. So as you begin to gently deepen your body, to align your awareness to gently bubble to the surface. Hopefully you are getting bathed in bird song. <laughs> so pretty. And just allowing ourselves just to come back into our sacred space. And we're going to go into a little bit of journaling. So if you've got your journals and maybe you have got some um, 
cards as well. So you might want to uh, pull a card while we're uh, journaling as well. So as we go um, into our session, I'm just going to go through some of her um, tools <laughs> that she carries. Um, so Durga's many weapons and tools give us insight into what is needed to face our struggles. And because Goddess has um, Goddess Durga has between eight and 18 arms, means she's a powerful goddess. So the amount of arms that the goddess are seen as having um, kind of reflects their strength and their power. So she's quite a powerful, powerful goddess. So with her composure and conviction, we can face whatever stands before us. So this is really um, like staying in our love lane. This is like this is like one of the goddesses to really like stay in our love lane, being aware of, and especially. At the moment like the world is a world she really invites us to you know stay in our lane in the truth of, of of who we are so she holds bells which bring clarity and remove negativity so we can often see if we are engaged in the outer world where there is you know much negativity at the moment playing out in our world and um, so her sword severs attachments and, and brings discrimination. And we're going to go into a little bit of, of around discernment, spiritual discernment in a, in a moment. So where are we letting our attention sit? Um, and I loved the, uh, somebody, and I think it was somebody from Drew shared, like what altars are we dedicating to? So where are we putting our focus into the negative or into the positive, you know, seeing positive outcome, or do we kind of buy into these, you know, these negative stories? So this is what I think this is one of the um, main invitations with Durga is to really be aware of our thought patterns and our language and how we are speaking and acting out in, in our lives. Um, so her shield protects and reflects any attacks of vicious criticism and I and vicious criticism usually is our own so usually we can be our own worst enemies or our own best friends and usually and often the way we speak to ourselves can be quite vicious can you know quite and quite criticizing so again being aware of how we are speaking to ourselves um, her club smashes injustice and subdues the over-analytical and judgmental mind. So again, if we are going into the all, you know, the um, you know, the club, if you remember the club, <laughs> the club will bash down the head. <laughs> so, you know, anywhere where we're, you know, we're going over stuff in our head, like it's playing over and over again. We might be, you know, going into we're actually in air element this week in the wisdom wheel so we can be in those states of anxiety you know anxious thought patterns and trying to figure everything out so been aware of um over analytical mindset um her spear penetrates the heart of any matter helping us locate central truths and act or decide from there so what you know what is true this is like one of my um like um if, if i'm getting these negative like thoughts and things like that like is it true this is a really good um you know three um words to to analyze the the analytical mind the over analytical mind like is it true now, the lotus represents our journey to enlightenment which always um many of the goddesses will you know be have a representation of lotus flower because the lotus is all about you know rising from the um the muddy depths yeah the colors are red and gold which are quite common actually in um the goddesses uh, but red and often gold are seen as her kind of main colors 
Um, I think there are others actually as well. And greens are often quite nice, um, you know, for the goddess because they're very much connected to earth. But also, um, yeah, those lovely golden, but like vibrant reds are, are really nice to work with. And if you have an altar, so I'm going to actually reset my altar tomorrow, but um, it's quite nice, I think, to have like a red cloth with maybe a gold overlay is quite nice for a Durga, Durga, Durga altar. And also red candles as well, or gold candles are nice as well to, to have on, on that um, your, your, um, your altar. So her lion or tiger, mainly I think tiger is what I've seen the main. I haven't, I don't know if I've seen lion, but I've seen tiger represents her strength to overcome challenges. So, you know, I think most of us here have probably overcome challenges at some points. And this is like, this is how, you know, the, the relation to the, um, to the tiger uh, comes in. So there's always an invitation, of course, with any of this kind of work, um, in, in the personal development field to look at ourselves and how are we holding ourselves back in life and this is where you know where the stories came from so wherever we've been you know told we're not enough or you'll never make a living out of doing that or you know all of the stuff that goes on and on and on like being aware of where that has you know where whose was that where did that come from so just having that bit of time maybe to journal around that as well so also because because her energy is very much around again this shine you know shining our light she's quite a vibrant goddess very um like gold and you know like all these lovely vibrant colors so where are we holding ourselves back or um kind of not realizing that we have everything within us to shine our brightest selves you know we can we can be our our best selves at any time and um, so some of the reasons why we might want to work with um, Goddess Durga, and I think I love the goddesses because, you know, we we can, you know, if we're having challenges in life, which we're never going to not have challenge in life, it's never going to be a thing, it, like it's not, it absolutely not. So where can we have, you know, we can call on these uh, lovely energies, these lovely archetypes to support us in, you know, it, when we're in, any sort of challenge so protection is one of her main um qualities so you know protecting us if we are in any situation where either somebody else or even protect us against ourselves sometimes you know if we've been mean and horrible to ourselves which we can often be um you know she's a lovely goddess to protect so of course she's courage and strength we've already spoke about that um, so, you know, inner, inner courage and strength and resilience to face challenges of adversity. So um, she is quite empowering. So she, again, if we are lacking in confidence, because she sits in the Manipura chakra, because we're lacking, if we're lacking in confidence or, you know, somebody's, I don't know, maybe said something to us that's knocked us a bit, like she's a really good goddess to you know, to invoke a little bit of inner fire when we might need it. So justice and righteousness. So again, if there are any causes that we are supporting, you know, in the world field that are, you know, where there is injustice, then she is going to be a really amazing goddess to work with, um, you know, around, around protection of the innocent, you know, anywhere that there is, you know, like I say, any injustice. So spiritual awakening, um, She's revered as the divine mother energy. So she's quite a mother energy, even though she's a fierce warrior. And she nurtures and guides us to, um, as we are, you know, as we step on our spiritual journey. So again, you know, quite often if we're, well, I'm saying early, but actually it can still happen later on, as I've just discovered over the last few weeks, life will always chuck curveballs, always. So, you know, when we're first stepping out, in you know on a spiritual path it can feel it can feel quite shaky and it can feel you know sometimes we're you know we're maybe moving away from people that maybe you know are not in alignment with us anymore and that you know that can feel quite hard sometimes so you know she's very good at allowing us to you know just to hold us in in those times 
So she helps us overcome ignorance, ego, and the attachment on, on so any uh, like attachments to the old self, you know, the old habits, the old ways of being, the old ways of doing things. Like she's really good to help us to like cut those attachments as we keep moving towards the next version of ourselves, the women that we are yet to become. So again, we're always working towards that, that next version of ourselves. Uh, so celebration and festivity, her um, during the festivals like Navarati, the um the Durga Pujas, there are many elaborate rituals. And actually in India, there are many, many temples set up for Durga, like Durga and Kali, I think when, when I was in India, they were the main temples that you came across. Uh, so yeah, they are very, very much um, you know, um devoted to you know there's a big devotional energy towards towards Durga and again because life you know life is pretty tricky um of course she's a lovely goddess to call on so we're going to do a little bit of journaling so I'd like you to consider maybe something in within yourself that you would love to change so it might be something that you are ready to like step into but there might be a part of you that might need to adjust or change to to do that so just so anything it could be anything i'm just on a, a at the moment um i'm doing zoe <laughs> So just on this thing of like shifting my like foods and things like that. So I'm like, yeah, just in that process of just changing things a little bit. And as I start to steer away and also my resistance to any sort of like aerobic activity. <laughs> yeah. And I want to get strong. I want to get strong. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm working with Durga to help support me in my new habits you know new ways of new ways of being as because the res resistance is tough sometimes isn't it you know like it is tough so this might be something that someone has pointed out to you or that you know is causing you a limitation so it might be fear you know fear of um failure you know all of these um things that we can often you know, I'm too old to do that, or I'm, you know, I'm not fit enough to do that, or, you know, anything. So just being aware of anything that might be present. It might be things like ind indecisiveness, one of mine, lack of discipline, lack of like, oh my God, I don't want to go and get on my bike. <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> so anywhere, um, yeah, where we might be preventing ourselves from stepping into our next versions and then also like if we look at our um, lives as they are at the moment um you know is there any area that you're not quite where you'd like to be without any push or force to be anything different than where you are but is there you know is there anywhere where you 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 know you might want to just create a little bit of space for you know for that next version so again with this sort of discernment you know just chopping away um you know a bit of the the brambles or whatever <laughs> so that you can see a bit clearer way ahead in so again the thing with um with this as well is like when we are creating new ways forward that there is always going to be something that's going to need to die so there's always going to have to be a death somewhere where something dies or you know we let go of something we you know we to become something new so you know what needs to kind of die that needs to drop away something and it might be something that's like yeah i'm just bored with this <laughs> i'm just sick of this this whole cycle all like over and over and over this you know not enough not good enough all this you know this sort of stuff
you might want to pull um, a card as well for, you know, if you're journaling too, so you might want to pull cards as you're doing that as well. And then I'm just going to offer um, a few like um, intros and I just wanted to th write three things that come to mind with this intro. So the first one is I never, I never. And then just three things that come to mind from I never. And then I always, I always. Again, you can pull a card for each one of these if you want to for a little bit more wisdom. I always. And then I can't be, I can't be, I can't be. And then I need to, I need to.
And what am I ready to let go of to make space for something new to grow? What am I ready to let go of to make space for something new to grow? And then what's one small step that you can take this month to get you a little closer to where you want to be? So what is one small step that you can take this month to get you a little closer to where you want to be? And then if you've got a, a if you have got a deck of oracle cards, if you want to shuffle them and just take three out, we'll do a little three card story, I think. Just taking out three cards and you can just pop them face down. Meant to say also that tiger's eye is quite a nice crystal for for Durga as well. Um, tiger's eye and kind of the flower. Hang on, let me just check. I think it might be hibiscus. Um, let's just see. Once you've got your um your three cards, we're gonna do a a three card star. Yeah, colours actually also uh red, yellow, orange, gold, and green uh colours. Crystals, tiger's eye, red jasper, black tourmaline, carnelian, bloodstone, and also clear quartz. And then flowers, marigolds, red hibiscus, 
um, chrysanthemums actually as well, jasmine and rose. all the other associations so once you've got your uh cards we're going to do a little three card story so if you start off your um story with once upon a time there was a warrior goddess essential oil tonight was um i used rosemary but the oil is also ginger is I've, um, I've got associated with um durga and also you could like lemon is quite nice as a um oil for the durga as well see what was that what oils i've got i think i've got three there's another one. Oh. Oh, it's tea tree, actually. Tea tree oil. So tea tree oil is oil of energetic boundaries. Um, I deserve to be nurtured, cherished, and loved. And the ginger is the oil of empowerment. My gift to you is power. I'm an empowered woman magnetizing abundance and joy. And then rosemary. So tea tree, ginger and rosemary oils associated with her as well. Okay, good. Oh yeah, sorry. And <laughs> I haven't quite finished the thing. Once upon a time, there was a warrior goddess who was stepping into her power. <laughs> she. And then if you want to continue your story from there. From the cards, and we're going to do a little bit of move. Well, a little bit, but well, not movement. Actually, we're not going to move far. We're actually, going to relax a lot instead. I'll share a few Durga mantras as well while we are in our yoga um, poses too. Any anybody here hoarders? Hoarders, yes. Oh well, um, well, Durka will help you with that for sure. <laughs> She's helping me this week. I huh? literally am just like ruthless, <laughs> massive clear out. Um, yeah. So because she, like, the if you think about the colour red is very much associated also to root chakra. So, um, you know, the colour red, the root chakra can be associated to fear. And that, that's often where this kind of hanging on to stuff, hanging on to, you know, 
finding it difficult to let go of things can come from. So she can be quite helpful for that. Get your red knickers on this week, ladies. <laughs> your red undies on. Oh, well done, Amanda. She's already got hers on. Our red knickers on. Do you know, I don't think I've got a pair of red knickers. I don't think I've got any. Have you? No, I ain't got any. Red and yellow, not colours I actually wear. Why, why would you ever wear red underwear other than if, like, some misguided bloke had bought you it for, like, Valentine's Day, mistakenly thinking that you might like it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's the, the colour and yellow. I don't have really any yellow in my wardrobe or in my my um, my yeah underwear drawer. If anyone's done their three card star, if you want to share it, that'd be nice. If anybody would like to, you can share and read out your story if you want to, or anything else that you might want to share that might have been apparent tonight. Anything, Sarah? I'll go for it, Andrea. You, oh. It's a really interesting one, actually, um, because that first meeting with Durga right really early on in the session mm. it was quite interesting what came through and she sort of you know as I was traveling down this kind of path of like mm, unworthiness she just turned around and said oh please can you just yes. throw that shit in and throw it and, and and can you and, and and she it's funny because she said claim in it. claim your glamour back yeah oh I love that claim your glamour really yeah Kind of fits with the red knickers, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, glamour. <laughs> that, that's a word I've never heard for a long time. Glamour. Yeah, yeah. I know. And I used to be a lot more glamorous than I am. I haven't worn makeup for about five years. Yeah, you're well glammy. You are. I'm you well well glammy. Yeah. I used to be really glammy, and I think I think I need to make a return. Yes. Um, definitely. But the, I got three great cards, Andrea. I, the first one that came was protection. Nice. The cut cut putting the cards. Um, call back your power. Cut cards. So retrieval. Wow. Second, the second was star seed. What lights you up? And the third was trust your path. If you knew you'd be supported, what would you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I thought they were fantastic. Three yeah, for work with this. Really good. And yeah. also, I think because um because I think also with her, like if we are wanting to make like a quantum leap or like a leap of faith into something that we're not you know we're a bit dithering you know, like a bit dithering on the edge like she's really great for that as well like she just get like she just holds you in her strength that it's going to be all right and like just jump you know when you're ready just jump you know mm -hmm. so, yeah gorgeous. yeah yeah it, interestingly I wrote once upon a time there was a warrior goddess who was stepping into her power she cut the cards called back her power and retrieved her soul she protected herself and pursued only that which lit her up, fully trusted her path and went all out to be the powerful priestess that she was sent here to be. Amazing. Love it. Love it. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Gorgeous. Anyone else want to share anything or anything that might have come through? Sharon? Yeah, I had a couple of really, really interesting cards when you were saying um, about the gold. I pulled the um, Archangel Jophiel, Time to Create. And actually, I pulled a few, three cards, and there were two male cards. So that's interesting. Like oh. the male Archangel energy is definitely needed. Yeah. Around here. Yeah. And then the second one, funnily enough, I pulled about um, Archangel Azrael is about endings and new beginnings and all of that glory that he's got. Also, the other male and then finished um with archaea virtue open your heart beautiful so, 
Yeah, again, wow. really, really strong. There's a lot of blood, but I'm not going to take up any more time. Yeah, God. yeah lovely. Thank you. Nice. Anyone else? Just one more. If anyone's got a little share they'd like to bring in. Oh, nice, Catherine. Asked to gather, make a medicine bag to reclaim the lost parts of myself. That's a ritual. Nice. Love that. Medicine bag. Yeah, nice. Nice. Love that. Gorgeous. So do you need a quick pee break before we go to yoga? Yeah, quick pee break. Let's have a quick pee break. And then if you've got, um, uh, like, you don't need a bowl. So, I mean, just a couple of... Uh, like a few cushions, um, will a bean bag or some, you know, something like that is is perfect. Um, we're not doing loads of yoga. We're just going to do some nice relaxation, really. So, lovely. Um, just yeah, just by yeah, a couple of minutes pee break, and then we'll we'll come back in a more. See you in a minute. That sound all right? Is that music loud or is it? Can you hear Sarah? Can you hear the is the music loud? Or I is it hear it very well yeah. to be honest. <laughs> you can't hear it, no? No, I can hear it very faintly in the background. How's that? A little bit more. That's better. There? Could even go a bit higher. Can you hear me? Yeah. The music's much quieter than your voice. That's all right. I don't want it to. It sometimes distorts a bit. That's all when it's uh, with the music on. Hopefully that that might be okay now. I'm just gonna go and put some joggers on because I've got tight jeans on. <laughs> all right. All right. Get your, jam, get your jammers on. <laughs> yeah, good idea. I'm absolutely shattered today. I'll just go and put my PJs on. All right, honey. Andrea? Yep. Yeah. Where do people buy those cards from? The Oracle card. Well, well um, uh, Amazon is really good. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, just on Amazon. So there's some nice ones called Goddess. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me just grab mine and I can show you. It's a nice deck uh, by Wendy Andrews. Let me show you. It's quite nice. Goddess Love. It's quite a nice one. And these these are quite easy to like. So that's the that's the Goddess Love. Oh uh, yeah. This is another one as well. So it's by Wendy Andrews. And you yeah you can pick them up on um on Amazon. Uh, just. Those are really good for doing that three card story that we've done. Some of them are a bit more in depth that might be a bit more difficult. So yeah. Like yeah. They, they're really, so there's the Goddess Love and she, there's another deck. Hang on, let me show you the other one she's done. <clears throat> and Goddess Dream. So that's the, that's the other one. Oh, right. Okay. They, they, they both work really well for, um, you know, just for, three card stories and just like for daily daily use yeah okay. wow. Absolutely. thank you you're welcome <laughs> karen where are you your house that looks lovely mate are you in a different place in a different well, i'm place? in the basement now oh my god it's lovely yeah it's sir cat's room actually but i don't know why i didn't come down here sooner because it's really grounding down here right on the ground obviously it looks it, looks it. i love it <laughs> beautiful Right, gorgeous. 
so can you all hear me all right i'm just gonna shut that window a little bit because the cats are catching at the moment <laughs> Can you see me all right? Do I need do, you, do I need to put the big light on? <laughs> cool. All right, good. If you want to have a little shake and a little warm up, um, then you can do that if you want. If you want to just give everything a little shake out, and maybe just a couple of the side stretch just to wake your body up a little bit if you've been sitting for a little while just while we're waiting for everybody to come back in might want to just have a little twist you can do it standing if you want to or if you're sitting that's good as well so we're going to start off with the um, half dragonfly pose. Um, dragonflies are all about new beginnings. So we're going to work with this nice, nice posture. Now again, please look after your own bodies. If anything hurts, don't do it. Um, pain is an indicator to stop always. So just make sure that you, you know, you're caring for yourself and um you know you're not gonna harm yourself in any way so this is a yin style uh practice tonight which um yin is is all about kind of getting ourselves into a posture and then holding for a little period of time and this is going to allow the meridians in the body to kind of open and be flooded with a nice fresh supply of of um of prana of or of chi so um yin is a little bit more taken from the chinese system so as we begin with dragonfly i'll come like this side on i think so dragonfly if we come to a seated position and the feet but you're going to be about hip width apart. Just give yourself a little wiggle to get your bottom um, nice and situated. If you've got some flesh around your sit bones, then you might want to have a little wiggle just to, you know, pull any flesh away so that your, your sit bones are nicely centered. And then if you just flex your feet a little, and just flex out through the backs of your legs and just find your legs kind of strong so they're not absolutely like tight but they're just supporting you nicely and then from here we're going to lift up a little bit now if you find that your pelvis is dropping back then you might want to pop a little cushion underneath the back of the pelvis just to tip you forward a little bit so once we're in that first position take your right leg and we're going to bring the right foot to the inside of the left leg at any level that suits your body. So if you want it lower down the leg, if you want a little padding underneath the knee, um, again, if your hips are you know are a bit quirky, then you might want a little a little padding under that knee. So just again working with what works for your body. So once we've got the right leg out to the side, we're going to just turn in so that we come to extend over the front leg and we're going to just walk our way forwards a little bit just to a point of where we start to feel a little bit of sensation in the body so i've been lifting quite a bit this last couple of days because i've been moving stuff around and i can really feel into my lower right side of my back is tight so just been aware of your own body and again just notice where your tight spots are Okay, good. Now, we're going to move into a flow with this pose and um, come in, in and out for three times before we come into the final pose. So the arms are going to come out to the sides with an in-breath. I think we did this on Monday night for those of you that were in on Monday night. So we're going to take a nice deep breath in as the arms come overhead. And then as you breathe out, we're going to turn the palms down and just bring the hands down the centre line of the body just to about heart level. And we're going to turn the palms in towards our chest 
I'm going to take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, turn the palms away. I'm going to extend just a little way, just as far as you, you need to come, just to feel sensation. And then once you feel a stretch, we're going to extend the hands out a little further as the head drops down. Then the hands cup in. So again, we're going to breathe in as you bring the hands towards the chest. Head comes up last. Just bring a lovely wave through the spine. And then out breath again, just to ease your way forward. Just feel your body just extending in. Be aware of the um, any limitations in your body where the tightness is. And again, one more time, breathe in. And as you breathe out, this time we're going to hold. So wherever your hands can be, and it doesn't matter if your head is not on your shin. <laughs> Mine is like way far off my shin as well. It doesn't matter. So we're just going to ease in. Again, be really aware of sensation in your body. So where are you feeling tight? And just allow your breath to move into those areas. Now I'm going to let your head drop. So they also get a little bit of um, stretch through the back of the neck, nourishing all of the, the muscles and nerves around the neck. Again, just allowing the breath to be steady. As your body begins to release tension and tightness from the day. So the meridians um, involved in this pose are the liver and the kidney, the urinary bladder and spleen meridians. So quite a lot of meridians here. So again, just allowing yourself to gently release into the pose. The sensation may be a little more in the back of the body. Just allowing your breath to be nice and slow and steady. And then take in your last three breaths there. I'm going to gently, gently use your hands to walk your way back up. So you're just supporting your spine as you come back up to a central position again. Now we're going to add in a little twist here. So we're going to breathe in as you take the arms overhead. And then as you breathe out this time, we're going to take your left hand onto your right knee and the right hand is going to come behind. So we're just going to gently twist just to neutralise that forward bending movement in your spine. And breathe. So we're just decompressing the body at the end of the day, which is a lovely thing for us to do. Just to give our body a little bit of support, a bit of goddess love from our, our goddess Durga. And then in breath, again, as the arms come up and overhead, come back to neutral position, and then out breath, release the hands. And then we're going to release the leg. And then just give your legs a little shuggle. So just a little flip side to side, a little bit of a shake, just to disperse the energy there. And then we're going to bring the left foot in. Again, just to wherever is, is good for your body. Not overdoing anything. You, again, you might want to adjust um, any flesh away from the sit bones as you come back to centre. And then again, you might want to just walk a little bit forward. So just feel into where your like edge is, so where you feel the stretch. So the back of the leg probably will be feeling it a bit, and the lower back, maybe right side, left side, sorry, might be feeling it too. So again, just be aware. I'm definitely feeling that I'm not as tight on this side than I was on the other side. So again, you might notice that as well. There's often an imbalance between left and right. So again, we're going to come back up to, <clears throat> to the center. We're going to bring the arms out to the sides with an in-breath as you take the arms overhead. Out-breath, again, draw the hands down the center line of the body. And in breath as you draw the hands in towards the center of the chest. 
and then out breath to gently ease your way forwards, just folding a little over that front leg. It drops in. And then again, in breath, as you come up through a lovely roll of the spine and then out breath. So everything's nice and slow. So we're sending a lovely signal to the body to slow down. And also sending a signal that it's safe to stretch. So this time, as you release forwards, just let your hands land wherever they can reach. And then let your head drop. And tune into your breath. And a feeling that gravity is just drawing you down nice and slow. Again, one of the lovely um, mantras with um, magical mantras that come with uh, Durga is I trust in my inner power to overcome any obstacle that comes my way. I trust in my inner power to overcome any obstacle that comes my way. Again, just tuning into your breath and this feeling of just letting your muscles melt a little bit, let them relax a little bit more. And then taking the last three breaths there. Again, I'm going to walk slowly, slowly. So just supporting with the hands as you walk back to an upright position. And then we're going to twist again to neutralize the spine. So you're going to breathe in as you take the arms overhead. And then as you breathe out, turn towards this time your left side. Right hand comes onto your left knee. And the left hand is behind as you look over your left shoulder. And just for a couple of breaths there to neutralize the spine. And again, breath in as the arms come overhead. And then breath out to release the hands down gently by your sides. And releasing the left leg, extending, give it a little shuggle. Maybe a little, sh little shake. Okay, good. Now we're going to come on to our back for um, reclining twist or twisted branches. So come on to your back. So again, just readjust yourself when you get once you get down. You might want to lift your bottom up and give it a little shake. And maybe lifting the head and then just pushing the shoulders down a little bit. Now we're going to bring the feet to the width of your mat or a bit wider than hip width apart. The arms are going to come out to the sides. You can either have palms up or down. So whatever feels good for your body. So just trust in your body to know what it needs. Now we're going to let the, let the knees just drop gently towards the right side as you look and turn the head towards the left side. So again, just feeling the stretch in your body and your breath be quite gentle. And then we're going to start to roll a little bit side to side. So you're going to breathe in and bring your knees to centre and your head to centre. And then as you breathe out, bring the knees across to the left and the head is going to move across to the right. And then we're going to breathe in, bring the knees to centre and the head to centre. And breathe out, the head left knees right so this actually balances the right and left hemispheres of the brain so this movement as you keep flowing with it 
breathing into the center, head, knees to center, and then breathing out. So we're just moving in opposite directions. So again, if you do have the over analytical mind that is very busy and like forever telling you stories, then anything that moves the body in opposite directions is going to be really good to balance the brain. Just one more time to the center. And then this time, I'm just going to hold that stretch for a couple of moments. Again, just breathing in there, letting everything relax. So again, twisting is a lovely way um, to end the day. Good. And then a lovely affirmation here. I honor my boundaries and stand firm in my truth, embodying the fearlessness of Goddess Durga. I honor my boundaries and stand firm in my truth, embodying the fearlessness of Goddess Durga. And then with your next in-breath, bring the knees to the centre, head to the centre. And out-breath and knees go to the right and the head goes to the left. I'm just going to hold that for a few breaths. And just allowing your body to begin to gently unwind. Then affirmation, I release all fears and doubts, knowing that I am supported by the fierce love and protection of Goddess Durga. I release all fears and doubts, knowing that I am supported by the fierce love and protection of Goddess Durga. And take a nice deep breath in, bring the knees to centre, head to centre. And then we're going to bring the knees in towards your chest, cross the ankles, just hold the knees and just come into cradle. So just gentle rock from side to side. Good. And then gently extending the legs away into Shavasana. So coming into your place of rest. For our relaxation. If you need a blanket to cover you, grabbing that. Yourselves covered. If you want to cover your eyes as well. Also... Your eyes, if you need to, and sell yourselves down. A little bit, it's just nine o'clock now. So, if, if you do need to leave, then, um. Just to let you know what the time is, if you need to. So finding that place that is just perfect for your body. Allowing your body to relax and to settle into the support beneath you. So as we've invoke this lovely energy of Durga to support us, to wrap us in her love and protection as we move through our days, the few days ahead. And wherever we need that little bit of extra support, we can call on Durga for her help. 
So as you take a few deep breaths, just allowing each breath to fill you with a sense of peace. You're releasing any tension within your body with each out breath. Visualize a beautiful, radiant image of Goddess Durga standing before you. See her adorned in the golden armor, wielding her weapons with confidence and grace. Feel her fierce and protective energy surrounding you, enveloping you in a cocoon of strength and courage. As you continue to breathe, bring your awareness to the center of your chest, the seat of your inner light. Visualize a small flame glowing brightly within you, radiating warmth and love. With each inhale, imagine this flame growing larger and brighter, expanding to fill your entire being luminous energy. Feel it illuminating every cell of your body, infusing you with vitality. As you bask in the glow of your inner light, feel Goddess Durga's protective presence surrounding you. And know that you are safe and supported and held in her loving embrace. Take a moment now to set a beautiful intention for this practice. What qualities or blessings would you like to invite by into your life? Visualize those intentions like beams of light extending outward from your heart and reach it towards the heavens. Release any worries or fears into the radiant light of Goddess Durga's presence. And trust that she is guiding you on your journey and protecting you every step of the way. Offer a silent prayer of gratitude to Goddess Durga for her blessings and protection. Feel her divine presence infusing you with strength, with courage, with faith. Get into gently deepen your breath. Maybe bring a little bit of wiggle into your fingers and into your toes. Stretching your arms overhead, just taking a nice stretch through your body. Maybe a little rock from side to side.
And then gently rolling off onto your right side, just curling up in a little ball. Then slowly and gently, when you are ready, gently bringing yourself back to seated position. And rubbing your palms together, creating a little bit of heat in your hands. Maybe cup the palms over your eyes. And just using your fingertips to gently massage over your face. Around your eyes, your beautiful eyes. Over your forehead, your temples. Over your head and your neck. And around your shoulders. Then rub your palms again and then let your palms just connect with your heart. Let your hands over your heart for a moment. I'm going to finish with a lovely reading from this gorgeous new book. If you don't have it, get it, it's so good. And it's number 32. You are completely unique. My love, always remember you are completely unique. There is absolutely no one on this planet like you. And that is how it was meant to be. You were born as an individually wrapped precious soul, delivered safely to this world to create and to have fun. Your natural tendency to ask questions, to push boundaries and do interesting things your life is by design, your design. You're here to educate yourself and others. You're here to inspire, to lead your own merry dance and to have fun in the doing of it. And darling you, you do that with such flair. Whether you realise it or not, the way you do things is so you and so effortless. You are completely unique. And just by treading foot on this beautiful earth, revel a little more in that. Okay. So allowing a beautiful and beautiful inner smile to rise from your heart your face to your eyes and have the most wonderful time with Durga next month. I'm not quite sure. I might work with Saraswati, I think. So have a lovely, lovely time with, with Goddess Durga. I am going to be uploading my new uh, booklet <laughs> onto my website um, a bit later on once I've got the recording. So um, if you would love to have a look at that and work with the the, um, all of the uh, bits and pieces within it, then um, then you can you can do that and enjoy it. I hope. Um, so our circle is now closed. Thank you everybody for your gorgeousness. And if you have got a candle, we'll just bring them in and just blow a little bit of light into our world. Gorgeous. And I will hopefully see you next time. If you fancy joining for yoga on Mondays at 7.30, it is very easy and bedtime yoga. So it would be lovely to see you. And um, hopefully I'm going to see Julie and Sarah tomorrow night. Yay! <laughs>
going out partying. No, not really. Um, but yeah, have a gorgeous, gorgeous um, few weeks ahead and I'll see you next month for Saraswati Goddess. Lots of love. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, welcome. Bye. 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 Bye.